Welcome my friends. In this video, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of my process for this piece, which I've named Iterate Second. This piece, if I go over here into my layers panel and count the layers, has 17 layers, although technically it has a few more if you count these layer groups right here, which you can open and reveal even more layers. But we're not going to split hairs, so we'll say 17-ish layers. What I'm going to do is show you each layer one by one. So I'm going to start with the very bottom layer and show you only that one layer. And then I'm going to chronologically show you the next layer on top of that, and the next layer on top of that, and etc. And you'll be able to see how each layer builds on the one below it to create the final piece. So let's get right to it. I'm going to hide everything except the very bottom layer, which is layer zero. All right, so that is the very first layer. Now, having said that, when I create these pieces, I don't set out and say, okay, this photo with this layer mask on it is going to be my first layer. I'm always changing the layer order. I'm always changing how the images are blending together. I'm duplicating layers. I'm deleting layers. It's a constant shuffle and dance. And the layer order that you see here is the way it is just because I like how they all work together in this order to create the final piece that you see. So having said that, this is what I decided looks best at the very bottom. And then if we show the next layer on top of that, that is going to be a paint layer. And then on top of that, another photo. You can see what's going on in each individual layer right here in the layer thumbnail. And then on top of that is another photo. And just for fun, I'll show you what this photo looks like just by itself. That is an abstract dreamy photo of an iris petal, I believe. And I'll bring back everything up till now. Then on top of that, we have these darker marks, which are going to blend on top of what I have so far and bring in some depth and highlights. Then on top of that, we have more paint and then yet again some more paint and then on top of that another photo layer which adds some more highlights and then another photo which shows up right here and adds highlights and some texture and then another photo same thing different spot and then this layer lots of white and I and using it to bring in some texture and some lines. And then again, another photo. And it this layer and the one on top of it, which I'll show, it looks black and white in the thumbnail here, but since I have this color overlay applying to each one, and I've chosen green for the color overlay, that's why it's showing up in the actual piece as green. Just a little fun layer. All right, and then on top of that, we have this, which is mostly dark. So when I blend it on top of everything, it brings in more darks and shadows and depth. Now, I want to take a look at this layer by itself. And this is what it looks like. And I think this layer by itself looks really cool. I love the black and white. I love these lines. These lines are from the edges of the iris petals. So this image by itself is actually a composite of multiple photos. So we have a composite within a composite. And that sounds kind of complicated, but I don't set out to, I don't set out to create a composite to use as my shadows in a piece. It's just something that naturally comes from playing and experimenting and if I were to try to recreate this image I don't think I would be able to because I've flattened it meaning I've taken whatever layers were making it up and I've squished them all into one layer and I, I didn't save that layer anywhere else so 
this is now the only version of this composite I have. And I kind of like the mystery. I kind of like that I can't go back and find what photos were are making up this one layer that I'm using as my shadows. I I kind of like that I threw it away. It's it's a it's a fun nod to actual physical painting. So in digital, yes, you can go back, but also it's kind of fun to challenge yourself and say, hey, I'm gonna stick with this and I'm going to kind of throw away my way back. And so yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. I really love this layer and I really love how it brings in the shadows. So I'm going to bring back everything up till now. All right, so I'm gonna to toggle it again so you can see how it's affecting everything underneath it. All right, and then the last three layers are a curves layer to brighten things up. And then I wanted to change these colors. I wasn't really feeling the purple and the green, so I shifted the hues to more orange and red, purple and blue. And then I wanted to bring in more pink in this area and this area, so I just painted some pink on this layer eight right here and I blended it in. Now you have more pink here. So that is the final piece as you see it. Fun fact, these paint marks I didn't add till yesterday, but the piece in general I made almost a year ago. So that is the beauty of digital. You can reorder and stick new layers in between layers that you, you know, you when you're making an actual painting, you can only paint on top of what you did last. But when you're working digitally, you can put in a layer on top of your very first layer and underneath your second layer, like, like this paint here. And it, it just opens up so many awesome possibilities. Now the last thing that I want to show you is something that I just like to have fun with after I've decided that a piece is finished. Not only would I go in and make sure and toggle each layer to make sure it's actually having an effect on the final piece. I like to just see what, you know, if I delete this layer and this layer and this layer, I have almost a brand new piece and it's just so fun to see the possibilities. And this is another, this can become sort of a double-edged sword in digital because, oh yeah, I love this piece, but what if I just make this one little change and I can, sometimes I just sit there toggling back and forth and like, oh, do I like that better? Do I like this better? Which is gonna be the final piece? Do I make both of these my final pieces? So you just have so many options, but I'm not gonna go down that road right now because I'm already getting a little bit overwhelmed thinking about it. So I'm just gonna bring back all of my layers, but it's just fun to go back into your layers and see how each one changes the overall piece. Sometimes it changes into something completely different. And yeah, there you have it. That is Iterate Second. I hope you enjoyed seeing this process and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.